first thing that is right now the most topical and the most contemporary issue and the legislation which has been discussed is the Digital India Act. Uh, I'm sure that everyone has been, uh, you know, listening about the DI or hearing about it in the past few months in some context or the other. The conversation on the DI has been going on for let's say more than a year now. Now, recently what has happened is two days, I think a day or two before there was the most significant development in terms of how the DI will look like came uh, came through. There was a Digital India conclave or a discussion in Bangalore uh, by Rajiv Chandrasekhar and, and the Ministry. They, they, they invited stakeholders from civil society, government, legal community, etc. to explain to them what the law, uh, Digital India Bill or Digital India Law will look like. And they of course took uh, inputs from them. I was there on that discussion and it was uh, possibly the most uh, important piece of development we've had on the Digital India Bill till date. Uh, so the genesis or the scope of the Digital India Bill is essentially that the thought process behind the Digital India Bill, how it started was it wants to replace the IT Act of 2000. Now the IT Act of course uh, formulated almost, was formulated almost two decades ago and the idea behind the Digital India Act is that to make, to update the IT Act which is now let's say for a lot of intents and purposes obsolete and needs to be updated. So that's the starting point. Right, that is where the thought process in the government and in the community started to have a DIA in the first place. However, what has happened in the past few months is that the scope of DIA and what it can cover has expanded, uh, you know, exponentially. Everything under the sun which has anything to do with the internet is now being discussed within the context of the DIA. Uh, the, the most important evidence was of course the presentation that the ministry gave two days ago and uh, the, the comments gave by the ministry on that presentation and the kind of uh, things they want to cover in the DIA at this point are uh, honestly everything under the sun comes under it as of now uh, the way they're looking at it case in point uh, the first thing that they really want to look at of course which is essentially the mandate of the IT Act right now is the safe harbor protection now the safe harbor protection for intermediaries uh, essentially uh, is the main thrust of how the IT Act and how the on how platforms are able to operate on it and how to what extent do they have let's say any sort of immunity uh, in the context of the content that is posted there. So the safe harbor provisions uh, and it's been a bone of contention between the government and technology companies for the past few years to what extent can uh, companies say that you know this is something that we cannot moderate this is something that we cannot uh, filter actively so whatever is there is there and we are uh, covered under the safe harbor provision so that aspect the government is now trying to regulate one of the ways that they may be looking at uh, doing that is of course having some sort of delineation to what to what extent uh, is the content moderation that is being done like to what extent the content that is on a certain website has any interference from the platform and it does not if the level of interference that the platform has on the uh, content that is there they might uh, you know, have to lose safe harbor provisions in that case and if not then of course it goes on. But the idea is that they do want to completely revamp the way safe harbor provisions work in India. Not to say that it will be taken away but the way we look at it might be changed under the DI. But moving beyond that, the DI looks to do a host of other, other things in that. Uh, it wants to for example look at how non-personal data is shared among uh, you know different players and how technology companies are able to share non-personal data which is anonymized which is which does not have my personal identifiers it also uh, wants to look at how anonymized data sets can be looked at by the government to boost efficiency of its schemes to boost efficiency of its uh, programs etc so a lot of things they want to look at they're also looking at including some sort of competition law provisions in it uh, to the extent that you know uh, the monopoly power or the market power that platforms or companies have due to the amount of data they collect how do you curtail that so there's a lot of things that they wanted to there are also conversations about having specific provisions for specific sectors there are conversations that there might be a chapter or there might be a provision specifically for let's say ai or a specific chapter for let's say metaverse etc etc depending on the sectors that are coming up right now so this is the very beginning of the formulation of the digital india act in india right now the way it's supposed to develop this year uh, is that before a draft bill comes into, be, uh, comes into being, the ministry says that they want to hold extensive stakeholder consultations because this law essentially is going to, as I said, probably change the way we use the internet and change the way uh, 
we interact with platforms and technology companies so they are so they are taking a very cautious and a very well thought out approach to the way to formulate in this law so between now and let's say the next four, five to six months they're going to have extensive consultations now these consultations may happen a one on one or close with consultations between certain stakeholders be it companies be it civil society be it uh, industry organizations or consumer bodies etc and of course it's very likely that a public stakeholder consultation will also be held uh where everyone including someone who's not a part of the policy to system directly uh any anyone in this room essentially can go and you know file their comments on the internet on the ministry's website and have a say on what the law should look like once that happens a draft in uh, digital india bill will be formulated and then after the bill is formulated another level of consultations and another level of uh you know revamps is going to be done before it's introduced in the parliament so the ministry has not given any timeline as such uh, as to why, when they are expecting to come out with this law but uh, in my experience and the way we've seen things develop uh, a very very conservative timeline or a very realistic timeline for this would be that if we are expecting this law to be tabled in the parliament we should expect this to happen in the monsoon session of next year uh, so monsoon session 2024 is what i am thinking will happen not before that because there's a le- there's an insane level of consultations that are being going to that are going to happen for this law so if anyone is looking to let's say start their uh their in the public policy text policy ecosystem participating in the conversation on the digital india bill is a very good idea because a the scope is massive irrespective of what your expertise is if you're someone who's interested in competition if you're someone who's interested in let's say intermediary liability or encryption the cyber security is also been discussed to be a part of this law as i said everything for the internet is now being discussed as part of this law so whatever you feel your expertise is in when wherever you can contribute you can talk about those overlaps because there are conversations that there are significant overlaps with this legislation that they thought talking about we do already have a competition legislation in india we have more updates to the competition law coming up we have a we have a data privacy bill which we talking about we have a telecom bill so there's a lot happening we have e-commerce legislations so there's a lot of conversation about to what extent will there be conflicts and jurisdictional overlaps for this law so you can pick your area of expertise and talk about those overlaps and see how it can contribute to the discourse that's the first piece and the most important piece of development that is happening in india right now on tech policy